Um, man. What's really good, family tree? Let me know if you're live in the building with me. Holla at your boy. Hit us up with a like button straight away and hit us up in the comment section. Yeah, buddy. All right, so we're going to try to do the show in about 45 minutes, okay? We're going to be discussing the African wives of Prophet Muhammad. You know, when he's there. Normally, we don't actually get to discuss these things. And again, we're doing it a twist. We're going to do a twist. Again, as we said, we've missed out on Black History Month. So we're going to do a whole revival of Black History Month, especially for the Islamic section. Then move on to the Christian section as well. All right. So, 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 so. Um, yeah, family tree, let me know if the video, visuals, and the audio is in sync and everything is looking crisp. Yeah, buddy. All right. So, yeah, as I was saying, we don't really get to touch upon africans inside of islam um much and when we do we're not talking of them from a highly elevated stance or position so we're going to try to just switch that up a little bit okay so last episode we talked about the ethiopian or the african empire of islam i.e the caliphate of umar who is reportedly as an Ethiopian ancestry, okay, or he is Ethiopian. Then we go into Amr ibn al az who was the um, general and conqueror of Egypt, who was also, um, you know, an Ethiopian as well and a companion of uh, the Prophet Muhammad. So we never ever get to hear these individuals who are in high statuses or in rulership positions and hopefully i'm giving you something that's real different and you can you know speak to your imams and your teachers and your friends and so forth and educate them about the african um uh, presence and influence and contribution to what is formally known as not formally <laughs> presently known as islam so yeah Let's actually get into this, baby. Let's get into this. Um, I'm going to quickly just look at the comment section. So if you're going to holler at me, remember to tag Titans TV, and then I'll be able to read it out or respond, or it will catch my attention, basically. So please do that. And also, um, yeah, as well, you know, the Super Chats as well gets my attention. So those are the two things that I'm able to see straight away on the screen because they're in bright colors. All right, so let's do this. Jupiter, Jupiter says, after this jog on over to Real and Angelus chat. Okay, peace and love, Callum. What's good? Lady Divine's up in the building. Jeez. Oh man, John McDermott, where is he? Where is he at? I know he's here somewhere, he must be. Um, all right, times when you come into the park, and I thought, I don't know yet, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All right, so let's quickly jump into this, okay? Let's jump into this. So, again, we're going to be talking about the African wives of Prophet Muhammad. I know most people don't actually knew, no, he had African relations with African women and so forth. So, we're going to just jump into that real quickly. Um, and I think the next episode, I might talk about the Abbasid Empire and its African roots as well. Okay, so we're going to start speaking about Islam from its African perspective rather than the normal perspective that we hear about. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Um, I don't want to show to be exhaustive. I could. Muhammad was married to about 13 to 14 wives uh, at different times, um, some people say, okay? And I don't want to do an exhaustive list because I could really do an exhaustive list. I'm only going to mention two, maybe three, two or three African uh, wives of the Prophet and their significance and their roles that they played with inside of Islam, all right? So let's do this, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, let's try to do this on the 45 minutes. And hopefully, again, I'm going to try to sort out the hangouts. I'm just working on things. All right, let me jump into this. So, let's do this. We're actually going to speak on the first wife after the prophets. Um, the first wife after, no, the second wife, I should say. The second wife after Muhammad's first wife passed away. This is Khadija. Khadija was the first wife of Muhammad, married to her for several years, had several children with her as well. Um, we could dig into the Ethiopian or African roots of her, but I don't want to get too, too much drawn away. And let's just talk about the blatant ones, okay? Um, so his wife, okay, after, after, after Khadija died was, does anybody here know? Does anybody here know? I'm going to ask you, who was Muhammad's first, second wife? Let's see how, how, how in touch you guys actually are. 
Do -do 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 -do. Come on. Black woman and child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, we're doing this, you know. We're doing this. Black African power. <laughs> and woman power. There you go. Sauda. There you go. Sauda bin Zama. Okay. Was his second wife. Now, interestingly enough, we hear about black history or African history, and we hear about Islam, and we always hear about, you know, the slaves and Bilal's and so forth, but nobody talks about the black woman herself. The black woman herself. When Muhammad was distraught, he needed a woman in the house to look after his family. He needed somebody who can support him mentally, emotionally, spiritually, economically, and household-wise, and so forth, tribally as well. He turned to a black woman. And why do I say a black woman? Because goddamn, what the hell does the word Sauda mean? I'm gonna ask anybody who's who's my, who's my um you know who who here speaks a little bit of Arabia, okay? It's in the word itself, okay? It's in the word itself. The word Sauda literally means a black woman. Literally means it. it means black woman. But we're gonna jump into this. I'm gonna jump into this because sometimes we have to educate ourselves on African history how it relates to us at present. So let's do this. There you go, Black Princess Sauda Dark. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So yeah, um, Sauda is the feminine form of the word Aswad. Aswad literally means black. It's the, um, hmm, you could want, yeah, I was gonna say it's a neuter noun, but it's actually a, a masculine noun, whereas Sauda is literally the feminine noun of the word black. All right, so let me just jump into this, let's see. Do -do -do. Ah, stream finished. No, it can't possibly be stream finished. Let me just double check because my thing is acting mad crazy right now. I was about to say, how the hell could it just be finished just like that? All right, so we're still here, baby. We're still here. We're still here. Oh, man. All right. So let me jump in to see what I've got in store for you. Cool. So let's, let's just share the screen. Doom, 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 doom. Transform. Let's just flip the screen. All right, over here, we're just gonna do a quick Wikipedia search and afterwards we're gonna get into something proper. All right, so over here, as you can see, I hopefully that is clear. Let me know if it's large enough for everybody. Sauda bint uh, Zama, um, biography. Her father was Zama ibn Kays, who was from the Amir ibn Nuay clan of the Quarish tribe in Mecca. Her mother is al Shamas bint Kays, who was from the Najah clan of Khazraj tribe in Medina. Um, and it talks about her and so forth, which is pretty awesome, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just going to just, just go through a little bit with you guys. Let's see, Marriage to Muhammad, up here. I don't know if we can read it. Is that clear enough for everybody? Let me know if it's clear enough for you guys. But it says here, Sauda bin Zama had been one of the first women to immigrate to Abyssinia in the way of Allah. Her husband had died. She was a tall and large black-skinned woman with jolly, kindly disposition and just the right person to take care of Muhammad's household and family. So, I'm just going to drop that there for you guys. So, for those of you guys who don't have much of Islamic um, you know, books and so forth, I'm just trying to give you something real simple. If you want to Wikipedia and find out who she is, it's right there. All right? So, make it larger, you say. Make it larger. Um, let's see if we can make it larger. Do -do -do -do. But let me know if you guys are with it. Let's see. Back, back again. Let's see if I can make it larger. I'm not too sure if I can, though. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Nah, that is, I believe that's the largest I can actually as I do this but then a lot of it is cut out okay there you go let me know if you all can read that Sauda bin Zama had been one of the first women to immigrate to Abyssinia in the way of Allah husband and her died she was a tall and large black skinned woman with a jolly kindly disposition and just the right person to take care of Muhammad's household and family all right so, but well, what we're going to do is actually jump in a bit further, okay? Let me know, is everybody on board? Can everybody see that? Is it large enough? And so forth. Let me know, family, because we're doing this here for you. All right, man, that ultra funky is in the building. I'm an ordained minister, but I still want to learn. That's right, my brother. 
you know, got that, got that super duper pass. Uh, all right, cool. Very visible. Yes, James. See, I want you to start bringing up this stuff at Speaker's Corner. <laughs> Talk to us about the African wives of Muhammad. All right. Okay, cool. So let's go in a bit further. Let's go in a bit further. So we're going to talk about her and her Ethiopian ancestry. All right. Um, let's see if I can do this over here. Bear with me. Uh -huh. Okay. I think, I think it's imagery. There we go. So if I can make this a little bit larger for you, transform. And we're gonna fit to screen. All right, cool, perfect. Let me know if that is visible for you guys. Um, I want to see if I can make it a bit bigger. Does that work? Nope. I don't know if it does work, but let me know. So over here is like a list again. It's coming from Ibn Jalzi's work, um, which I previously showed to you guys. All right, over here. Very good book to buy. I I do. Adjure all of you lot to like go ahead, go ahead. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and make the purchase. All right, go ahead and make the purchase. It's literally called "Illuminating the Darkness: The Virtues of the Blacks and Abyssinians." And on here, on page, let's just double check. On page two hundred and ninety-four, two hundred and ninety-four of this book, it lists all of the Ethiopian blacks, um, black women that fathered sorry that mothered um you know the quar that were mothers of the quarish youths okay or quarish children or sons so it's very interesting very interesting book it's not exhaustive in the fact that it doesn't go through all of the Arabi arabian tribes who were of ethiopian or abyssinian or zanj or whatever the case um ancestry it doesn't do that it just st strictly talks about the quarish and what ibn jowzi was able to find obviously there's much more but that's what he was able to find go on there it's a very interesting book i believe you can pick up that book for about 25 30 pounds maybe less i don't know depending on where you're going so if you want to learn about African history, black history, especially in the context to do with Arabia, especially to do with the context of 7th century, 8th century um, as well, like pick up some of these books that I'm showing you, you know, it's like, do it, baby, do it. All right. So in there, it, as I said, it lists, it lists, um, you know, the different African women um, or black women who were mothers of um the quarish okay quarish you let me just make sure everything is good cool there you go so we're actually going to be talking about the wives of the prophet okay so here we go the wives of the prophet muhammad their strides in their lives another one you could literally pick up these books or download the pdf right i'm giving you everything all the sources, so please, like, if you're ready to do your research, go ahead and do your research. Um, let's see, what page are we going to? Page 25 for Sauda. Okay. Dun -dum -dum -dum. Let's keep on scrolling down until we reach page 25. All right. Here we go. The mother of the believers, Sauda bint Zumar. May Allah be pleased with her. All right, so cool. All right, so Sauda, so we're now going to go through her name and her lineage and so forth, right? Like that, right? So it says over here, Sauda bint Zumar was the second wife of the trustworthy prophet. The prophet married her after his sister, Khadija, after his wife, sorry, Khadija bint Khuwailid had passed away. Her father was Zum, Zuma. Ibn Qais, Ibn Sham, sorry, Ibn Abshams, Ibn Abd Wad, Ibn Amir, Ibn Luai, Ibn Khalib. Thus her lineage meets with the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Luai. Okay, so that's her there, that's her lineage. Okay, that's her lineage. Now, we're actually going to bring up this over here. And hopefully, on the, where it's, where you see the red underlining. Okay. We're now going to bring up the lineage again, all right? And it says here, Abdullah ibn Zama from the Bani Amir ibn Luai, okay? And if we go back, remember, her father was Zama, 
who is from the Banu Amir ibn Nuwar. Okay, and now he married an Habashi woman. Okay, who he had a child with called Abdullah, um, which is there. Okay, boom. All right, so his son was Abdullah. And it, basically, this just only lists the, the, the male children rather than all of the children, okay? Because it would be very exhaustive. So as we can see, her father, okay, Zama, had an Ethiopian wife. Had an Ethiopian wife, all right? So, Asawada, who is the black woman, daughter of Zama and daughter of an Abyssinian, was married to the Prophet Muhammad. His second wife. I wonder who gets taught this. Does anybody get this taught? Get taught this about African history? No, no. Do does anybody? All right. So we're gonna learn today. We're gonna learn today. Let's learn about some more curious facts about um, about her. Okay, about Sauda. Let's go into this, and it continues. Okay, and it says over here, as for her mother. She was Ashamus bint Qais ibn Zaid, who belonged to the tribe of Bani Amir ibn Ghanam ibn Adi ibn Anajir al Ansari. She was the niece, okay? She was the niece, okay, of Salma bint Amr ibn Zaid, the mother of Abdul Muttalib. Okay, she was the niece of Salma bint Amr ibn Zaid. Now, and the mother of Abdul Muttalib. So now we understand that Sauda, who is a black woman, who is of Habashi Abyssinian ancestry, okay, on her mother's side, was also related to the mother of Abdul Muttalib. Now, I have a question for you guys. Let's see. So of, of those of you guys who know a little bit of African history, a little bit of Islamic history, let's see. The question to you guys is this. Who was Abdul Muttalib? Who was Abdul Muttalib? Can anybody tell me? Doom, 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 doom. Oh, wait. Come on, family. Come on. The name rings a bell, but you can't remember. Oh man, yeah, come on, yeah. I know you've been, you've been, you lot been tuned into Titans TV. You've been dropping this knowledge for a long time now. Abdul Muttalib Shaib Ibn Hashim uh, was the grandfather of the Islamic prophet, grandfather of the prophet. Well done, well done, well. Done. I love you. You see, I know I'm here for a reason. The grandfather of Muhammad, if I remember correctly. Yes, well done. Well done, well done, well done. So we realize that the grand... No idea. Uh, Abdullah. Abdullah. Abdul Muttalib. Aha. Uh -huh. Hashim. Okay, cool. So, the great-grandmother of the prophet Okay, the mother of Abdul Muttalib, it may just indicate that she was of Habashi Ethiopian ancestry, right? It may just indicate that since she was, sorry, since Sauda, mom, being an Abyssinian, was the niece of her, of Salma ibn uh, bint Amr. Hmm, interesting, that. Interesting. Hmm. Does it indicate that Muhammad may have Habashi, Abyssinian ancestry? I don't know. It's not me saying it all. It's not me saying it. But let's continue. Let's continue. Let's, let's, let's do a little something something over here. So, let's actually go into Salma bint Amr. Okay? Salma bint Amr. Very interesting character. So, let's go into it real quickly. Mm-mm-mm. Now, for those of you guys who know about Salma bint Amr, okay, again, this is from the Sirah of Ibn Ishaq, edited by Ibn Hashim, 
Okay, and this is on page 59. And it says here, Hashim had gone to Medina and married Salma, daughter of Amr, one of the Bani Adi al-Najr, before she had been married to so forth and so forth. And it says here, okay, on account of the high position she held among her people, she would only marry on a condition that she should retain control of her own affairs. All right, there's a whole story, you know, of her son, um, Sheba, which literally means gray, gray, um, being born and uh, for for um, Hashim and so forth. But there's a whole story of trying to bring him back. But she was like, no, nah, fam, you can't take my son nowhere. I, ain't, I don't know what you Arabs think this is, right? But, but huh, I run things over here. Now, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting because it mentions that she holds a very high position. Um, she holds a very high position, okay, amongst her people. And, you know, evidently over Hashim, evidently over um, Al-Mutalib, evidently over her son as well, because she was able to call the shots. She was control of her own affairs, um, which was something quite peculiar, okay? But we never get told like what type of position it is that she actually held, okay? We never really get taught what type of position she held. I'm gonna ask any of you guys, do you know what type of position she held? Does anybody here know what position she actually held? What is her high status? What is it exactly? Does anybody here know? We're gonna do this. And then afterwards, you go back and speak to your imams and your teachers and everybody else and speak on this and go to speaker's corner and let's discuss these type of subjects. <laughs> now, we already know I've dropped this. I've dropped this like a hundred times. No, a hundred times. I've dropped this on a couple of shows before, but we're going to go back into this. All right. So right now we're going to go again, again back into some books and we're going to go into some Syria literature. Okay. Of course, of course. I like that somebody drops royalty. I like that. I'm glad you know. All right. So the very first thing we're going to go to, we're going to go to the life of Muhammad. This is Syria literature. All right. And, and this is from the Chinese sources themselves. Right. So I'm not making this up. Some people would love for Callum to be like, yeah, fam, you wrote that book and you put it in that book. It just shows you how broad and vast my actual learning is, you know. <laughs> I'm finding ish that y'all can't even dream about finding. All right, so I'm going to go here. Yeah? So we're going to go to page 47. All right, let me just jump onto page 47 because these questions have always been plaguing my mind for a long time. Like, you know, when you ask yourself these questions, when you read books, you're like, but what does this mean? But what does this mean? It says here, in the year King, King Saifu ascended the throne of Abyssinia and from everywhere people went, to offer congratulations, the princes and rulers submitted to him. Officials were honest and the people had peace. The Seifu, okay, continues, continue. Okay, so we know understand it's the Abyssinian king. And he says here, okay. Okay, so say the king was pleased, okay. Um, we're speaking to Abdul Muttalib and claimed relationship. He made Abdul Muttalib sit close to his knees and said to him, the Lord has given me an honorable position of responsibilities for all on the heaven and it has given fullness of grace and so forth continues it's a very long story i've already dropped this before in a previous thing but what's very interesting here is most people would it will bypass you but it says here um he was the king was pleased and claimed relationship claimed relationship that means he claimed kinship that means he claimed a familiar tie with him that's what it means by claiming relationship all right huh he claimed relationship we don't understand what the hell that means yet callum couldn't you go a little bit deeper on for us to understand what this relationship is of course my dear this is what i'm here for <laughs> oh man i love life all right so we're going to go back, go back in again. So this time, all right, for clarity, we're going to go into um, the life of Prophet Muhammad yet again, Al Sirah Al Nabawiya by Ibn Khat, sorry Ibn Kathir. Again, don't don't 
don't say Callum, you did something wrong here. You wrote this in the book. No, no. Again, it's the sources, right? It's the sources. It's the sources. Sources saying it. I'm just, I'm just the revealer. Okay, I'm just the messenger. All right, All right. I'm just the messenger. All right. So, anyways, so he's telling the same story of how you know the same save he came, you know, uh, into power over Abyssinia and so forth and so forth. And again, Abdul Muttalib is with him. Aha, uh -huh, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. And Abdul Muttalib is speaking. Yet again, and the king asks, and who are you to speak amongst a king? <laughs> he replied, I am Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. That's a powerful name, you know. You know when you drop them names there? there? Yeah. You know when you drop them names there? You know when some people ask me, so who are you? I say, I'm Callum L. <laughs> Listen, you know when you drop your full name, the son of, the son of, son of, and the son of, son of, but it's powerful, you know. Why don't we do that no more in, in, in these years? Like, we need to start dropping them things there, you know. Baba, blah, 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 fula, fula, ibn fula, fula, and so forth, so forth. Like, just need to drop those names. Anyways, let me go back. back. Let me go, let me go back. So, here, okay, um, he replied, I am Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. And he was response, the, the Najashi or the king's response was this, our sister's son? And then Abdul Muttalib re responded, Nam, Nam, <laughs> meaning yes, yes. And they said, approach then, Abi, Abi, you've been standing there all this time. Why didn't you just tell me your, your father was Hashim? Why didn't you tell me your, why didn't you tell me uh, that you're my sister's son? Remember, Hashim is married to Salma, who held a high position, royalty, who was the Najashi sister, royalty. Yeah, people on the ask like wonder and perturb, like, like don't even ask the question. How did Muhammad know to send him to the Najashi, the king in Ethiopia? How did Muhammad know about this rightful ruler in Ethiopia? How did the um, early immigrants, the first Hijra to Ethiopia, how did these people from Mecca now had an audience with the king himself? It's like me going to Buckingham Palace and be like, yo, like, I need refuge. I need refuge. You know, looking at me like, who the hell are you, Riff Raff? It has to be you're part of the aristocracy. You have to be of kin. You have to be of family relationship uh, in order to have that type of, that type of, uh, I don't even know what to call it again. That type of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, all right. Uh, is everybody with me though? I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm talking to myself. Is everybody with me? Is everybody with me? Is everybody with me? Everybody with me. Let me know. So we realize, okay, that Muhammad's grandmother was the Najashi's sister, Habashi. Not me saying this. If you're upset with me, go and check your sources, right? Go and check your sources, all right? Very interesting. Now, this same um, Salma bint Amr, she was also the grandmother as well of the person who actually wrote and compiled the Quran. Which is a story for another day. I think that one's going to be a powerful story. That's a powerful story. All right? Who was called a little Jew boy. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. For those of you who don't know, I'm talking about Zayd ibn Thabit. Okay, Zayd ibn Thabit. Um, he was the one who actually um, compiled and wrote the Quran uh, during, and this is the Uthmanic recension, of course, um, that we're talking about. He was the one. Um, funnily enough, he was from Ethiopian Jewish, well, they claim he was Jew of Jewish descent as well. Imagine that. So, but truth say, most Ethiopians, the Ethiopic Empire or dynasties, they were most of them were either Jewish, i.e. Kalasha and so forth, Jewish that converted to Christianity. Hmm. 
maybe. Maybe Muhammad, according to the um, Judeo-Christian paradigm, could be a prophet if he had Jewish ancestry. Hmm. That's interesting. But that's a story for another day. That's a story for another day. I ain't saying nothing. I'm just saying. Anyway, I'm just, just, just lost in a trail of thought. So, so, is everybody good? Is everybody good? You liking the show so far? Let me know if you're not liking the show. Let me, let me know if you're not liking the show. <laughs> All right, let me speed up because I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. All right, cool. So, that was the first wife. We've gone through Sauda ibn uh, Zama, who is described as being a black woman. Her name actually means a black, literally means black woman. She is said to have Ethiopian ancestry, uh, and she's also related to, sorry, she's also the grandniece of Muhammad's great-grandmother, um, who was the Abyssinian Najashi's sister.